smudge marks on the drip stand. Gloves, they think. What does that mean? I don't get it. James thinks the killer must have worn them. Uh, are you OK, Mrs Beasley? Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, false alarm. Temperamental, those machines. So what you're saying is you think it might be someone from outside the clinic? Uh-huh. I mean, who doesn't know how to work the alarms? I told you I haven't done anything. But you know something. Come on, Sam, tell us. We could help you. You know who killed Daddy? Yeah. I do. Can help you but we got to know i'm sorry guys i can't look I'd, I'd like to tell you but jackie i've got to ask you a favor you can't tell the police about the gloves okay not just yet why what what are you hiding look i can't tell you but i swear i never heard eddie ah ah that's better Nick, be a good lad, will you? Take my suitcase through to the room? No, just a minute. Oh, look, I'm all tuckered out. I, I could do with a bit of a lie down. Is that the only one? That's oh, all I've got in the world. Now hold it right there. Oh, Sit look, down, Nick. I can't leave it there. It'll be in everybody's road. Not for long. Nick, put it down. And you, sit. Well, here or in the room? You don't have a room. Now sit down. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, it's the old chest, ever since I came out of the Navy. It's been a lively sort of a day, it takes it out of you. I'd better call the home, see what this is all about. Do you have the number? No, I don't. I won't do you a scrap of good. It's a horrible, gloomy prison of a place. The only time they're happy there is when one of us checks out in a box. It gives them the turnover, you see. I'm sure that's not true. Who do I talk to there? Can't remember. Oh, Mum, why does he have to stay there if he doesn't want to? It's not fair. Well, he can't stay here. Why not? Look, I'll give you my word as a gentleman and a Rotarian. Look, honestly, I'd be like a church mouse. You won't even know I'm here. Isn't there a relative I can call? No. Not a single one left now. I'm all alone. You turned me away from here and there's nothing left but the streets and to think how long I'd last out there. <laughs> Chris, is that you? Mm. What time is it? Um, just after seven. Well, if you weigh me, I would have come shopping with you. Oh, I managed. Are you ready for dinner? Mm-hmm. I'm starving. Hey, let's eat out. Well, we could if you like, but um, I just bought some nice fresh fish. OK. Hey, but after dinner, at least go dancing or something. I haven't been out for ages. What about the attic? I've heard it's a real rate. Oh, no. I used to go there all the time when it first opened, but it's really gone downhill. It's not as good as it used to be. Oh, well, what about the movies? Well, we could if you like, but we still haven't watched those videos I hired. How about we have a nice, quiet night home and watch them? Again? Chris, is this for my benefit? What? This let's stay home and be really quiet and never do anything routine. Hey, look, I just thought that after all this trouble with Philip Cotton, you'd want a bit of peace and quiet and a bit of time to settle in. Oh, thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate it. But lately... What? We never go out and have fun like we used to. Ellie, if you think that I'm bored just being here with you, I'm not. I really like it. Oh, so do I. I'm just being silly. Forget about it. I love you. Why don't you have a nice hot bath and by the time you're out, dinner will be served. OK, sounds good. <laughs> so, I just went through the door and Aggie fell flat in her face. <laughs> and Bert and Gwen, they're trying to charge her down, down the corridor. Well, the old dragon woman, she came storming out of her office and she said, you're responsible for this? Not a question asked. Yeah, of course she was right. Well, what's that got to do with it? I mean, she threw me out without a fair trial. That's undemocratic. 
Hey, your mother's been gone a fair time. Where'd she hurry off to? Don't know. Said she wouldn't be long, though. Mm. So what happened then? Where was I? Oh, I know. Yeah. Well, the old so-and-so, she rings the manager, who calls the cops. Look, they barely gave me time to pack my bags and I was out on the street with dire instructions never to darken their doorway again. Cool. <laughs> oh, here she is now. Where'd you get to, lass? The nursing home. They're very worried about you. They said you'd signed out. Oh, well, they would, wouldn't they? I had a nice long talk with a very pleasant and helpful head nurse. She said they've been trying to track down your daughter. I thought you said you were all alone. Oh, well, I might as well be. She's a wicked girl. Turned on her own flesh and blood. Threw me out in a scrap heap. It's just as well her mother isn't alive to, to, to see what a monster she created. The head nurse seemed to think Annette would be very concerned about you. Oh, yes, she'd put on a great show. But when she got me alone... She's no daughter of mine. I've disowned her. I won't see her. I won't see her. OK, George, calm down. I will calm down. I've, I've been in her clutches once. She's vicious and she's evil. And I won't go back. Look, honestly, I'd rather kill myself. Sam? Oh, I don't believe it. Well, you've heard him talk about his religious beliefs. It's not in him. I'm not so sure. In a way, it does make sense. Sam was the closest to Eddie. And... He was with him just before he died. Look, I didn't want to believe it either, but why else would he beg me not to take the gloves to the police? Um, there must be another explanation. The point is he had the opportunity and the motive, and he probably wouldn't have known to disconnect the alarm from Eddie's monitor. Oh, look, I don't know what to do. It's not fair on you if I don't go to the police. Absolutely. I think we should go down there right now. They'll have to dismiss the charge. Hold on. Sam must have had a good reason for asking you not to. Yeah, he probably wanted time to get out or destroy the evidence or something. What do you think, Jackie? Uh, I really don't know. Look, he was pretty upset, but I wouldn't have a clue what was going on inside his head. I still don't think Sam did it. Well, he's asked us to trust him. And as far as I'm concerned, that's what we should do. And if you're wrong? Sam, my man. I got your message. What was so important, I couldn't wait till tomorrow. Oh, I know. Don't tell me I left something behind the other day. You could say that. What? What do you think? Hey, I didn't come all the way down here to play guessing games. OK, give me a clue. Jackie found some gloves in the ambulance bay. What did she do with them? Did you leave them here deliberately to try and frame me? Of course not. I didn't leave them there at all. Yes, you did. Right after you killed Eddie. Oh, you've been drinking or something. Why would I kill Eddie? He was my best friend. That's why. He wanted to die. So you helped him. Does anyone else know? Not yet. But once the cops check out the gloves, they're bound to find fingerprints, hair, skin. Don't know it was you. Oh, God, I swear to you, man, I wasn't trying to put it on you. After I... I helped Eddie, I went out to the ambulance bay. I was hoping to find you there to give me an alibi. Then I kind of panicked and dumped the gloves. I didn't mean for anyone to take the rap for it. What about Burton, then? The nurse. Well, I thought I'd wait and see. I didn't think they'd actually arrest her. I mean, why would anyone think she killed Eddie? Doesn't make sense. Tell it to the police. Are they on their way? I don't know. I've asked Jackie to hold off. Then there's still time. We could get them back. They wouldn't be able to prove anything. And Burton will still go to jail? I don't think so. You can go to the cops. Admit that you killed Eddie. Man, George, you can really put it away. Well, after the way they start us up at home, I need feeding up. Oh, is that fresh tea? Here you go. Now, Ta. You know, last night was the best night's sleep I've had in ages. What a blessing. Not even to listen to those old biddies wheezing and coughing and spluttering their way through the night. Yes, well, don't get too used to it. Remember, it's only a temporary arrangement. No, of course, of course. Yeah, have you got any idea where you'll go? Not a clue. Sure you can't stay with your daughter? Oh, not a snowball's chance in hell. Look, words couldn't describe the way I feel about that ungrateful vixen. Hello. This is Harrison. My name's Annette Lithgow. Mother of saints, preserves. I I've come for my father. She's here. He's inside. Come on through. Man, this is going to be good. And it's, this is my son, Nick. Hello. Nick. Oh, you, you, hi. Dad? That's no, you. Dad, what's all this about? Why didn't you tell us you were unhappy at the home? Oh, 
fat lot you care. You're the one that banished me there in the first place. Oh, that's not true. Dad came to stay with us after he sold his house. Well, we were already sharing with my husband's mother. Ah, oh, most unnatural hag. Well, there was plenty of room. The trouble was the two of them didn't get on. Fought night and day. It was Dad's idea to move into the home, so I assumed he was happy there. I had no idea. Well, you do now, don't you? Oh, this is so embarrassing. You should have called me instead of bothering these people. Nah, George is no bother. We like him. And to visit occasionally. He said you were an ungrateful vixen and mistreated him. Nick, that is enough. He did. Oh, no, no, you, you, you're confused. It was the other one, her mother-in-law. Oh, right terror. I was afraid to go to sleep lest I woke up and with my throat cut. Oh, that's nonsense and you know it. The question is, what are we going to do with you now? Well, I'm perfectly happy where I am, thank you. Oh, no, George, we're full up, sorry. We've got a spare room. Nick, shut up. We can't exactly throw George out onto the street. The boy's quite right. We have a perfectly comfortable house. No. Well, then we'll find you another nursing home. Oh, they're all the same. They're a chamber of horrors. Next thing you know, they'll be, be thrashing us with whips or, or cattle prods. Oh, dear, I'm afraid Dad has a tendency to exaggerate a little. So I've noticed. Oh, sorry, darling. Did I wake you? Oh, no, it was time I was up. What are you doing? I'm oh, just rearranging a few things. Morning. I was thinking about putting the couch over there. Um, any particular reason? I thought it might make a nice change. If you don't want me to, I won't. No, 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 suit yourself. Oh! Oh, darling, are you all right? Sweetheart, how about you move them one at a time, you know? Give me a chance to get used to it. Yeah, all right, I'll uh, start on the kitchen covers. Hey! Not so fast. I missed you not being there when I got up this morning. Oh, I just feel like it's a waste if I sleep in on a day off. Well, sleep wasn't what I had in mind. <laughs> How about we go back to bed for a while? No, you'll be late for work. You know, I was thinking last night about how tired you've been lately. And then I thought... It's probably his diet. You know, all that takeaway food, junk from the coffee shop. So I, uh... Made you some sandwiches. Um, thanks. Hmm, don't mention it. Carrie, have you seen my car? I see. When was this? And that's official? Oh, God, I don't believe it. No, it's okay, I'm fine. Thanks for letting me know. What's wrong? Who was that? Sam, calling from the police station. There's been a development. That friend of Eddie's, Ian Truman, he's confessed to the killing. Oh, Carrie, that's wonderful. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Oh, Meredith. I'm almost a friend to believe it. Ellie. Uh, what are you doing down there? When was the last time you cleaned these cupboards, huh? When was the last time you made wild, oh. passionate love? <laughs> <laughs> You're well, not so... There's always hope. <laughs> I know why you're doing this. What? All this domestic stuff. <laughs> I'm being domestic. Hey, you were the one that wanted to stay at home last night. Well, I thought we could have a cosy night indoors. <laughs> we did. Yes, but it could have been cosy and... Chris. Sorry. Why am I doing this? You're trying to purge Philip out of your system. Cleansing the flat that he corrupted by making it totally different. Uh -huh. Thank you, Dr. Freud. If by different you mean clean, then you're right. I have a cleaner in here every week. Oh, looking at these cupboards, I'd sacrifice you. Why, are you after the job? <laughs> Just joking. Well, I'm off. See you later. Bye. Chris? You do still want me to stay here, don't you? Of course I do. Why? Well, I moved him because of Philip, and he's no longer around. Hey, I'm not letting you go that easy. Let's talk about this later, huh? Sure. See you later. I love you. Bye, lovely lady. Thanks again for being so understanding, Jenny. 
I'm just glad George has decided to give the home another chance. Yeah, well, a fat lot of choice a man had. Oh, don't start grumbling again, Dad. I'll put your stuff in the car. Ah, can't wait to get rid of me, eh? Hey, not me. I think you're good value. Try to convince Mum to let you stay. Shh. Oh, well. Maybe he's not a bad sort of a lad after all, but I tell you what, he was a right tear away when he first came to the home. I can tell you. <laughs> what? Nah, not me. George is thinking of this other kid. Aren't you, George? Oh, yes, there was this cheeky little beggar, but uh, he's gone now, eh? I think we should be going. Yeah, all right, the nitty. Don't get your knickers in a twist. Well, thanks again, Jen, for letting me bunk down the night. That's all right. Yeah, well, we'll see you later, son. Yeah, see you at the home. Ah, oh, yeah, I hope so. Bye. Bye, George. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye, Annette. Hey, Doc. Hi. Hello, Chris, you look tired. You and Alison have a busy weekend. Oh, no, we hardly left the flat. All oh, right, say no more, say no more. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, eh? Hey. Oh, we didn't do much of that either. Don't tell me the dreaded Doc Warner's hung up his spurs for a pipe and slipper brigade. Mowing the lawns on Sundays, taking the wife and kids for drives in the country. Listen, pal, this weekend was the exception that proves the rule. I'm not hanging up anything. Is Alison OK after all that hassle with Philip Cotton? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Is she all right? Yeah. Things are a bit tense, but I think she's getting over Sam, have you? Hmm? No. Oh. Kia ora, exam room. Yeah, he is. Just a sec. It's Alison. She sounds upset about something. Oh, hell. Hi, hon. What's up? He's after me again. He's in the apartment. Who? Philip? I came over from shopping. These things are all over the table. I heard them moving in the bedroom. Are you OK? No. No, I'm terrified. I'm reading from a, from a telephone box. OK. Hang up right now and phone the police. I'm on my way. I've already run the police. Good girl. I'm leaving now. I'll be right there. It's Philip. He's back. Oh. Can't you find anything better to do than lie around and watch television? No. It's boring around here since George left. You don't mean you seriously wanted him to stay here? Well, why not? It was fun. And he needed somewhere. It's not like he was over-enthusiastic about going back to the home. Right, we let him stay. Word gets out we're a soft touch, and pretty soon the entire population of the nursing home is moving in. Some things just aren't practical, Nick. Yeah, well, what about what you told me? About respecting old people? Well, that's true, we should. And we should be charitable, too. If he'd been really desperate, I might have let him stay. But he was just bored, wanting company. You can visit him at the nursing home any time. Oh, yeah, but it's still not right. Especially with his own daughter throwing him out. She didn't throw him out. He left. Yeah, only because he didn't have any choice. That's not how it sounded to me. And I wouldn't worry too much about George. He's perfectly able to look after himself. It must be awful being old. Having to depend on other people. Happens to all of us. Yeah, but do you think I'd do that to you? Throw you in a home when you're old? No way. Nick. I appreciate the thought, but let's worry about that when the time comes, eh? I'll have to go to the cops, Steve. Look, can't you just hang on a while longer? If Carrie's happy waiting, I... No, it's OK for you. I mean, you're not the one who'll be charged for withholding evidence. It's OK. You're back. Where have you been? Down at the police station. I told them about the gloves, but they probably won't need them now. The case has been closed. Why? Ian Truman confessed. Ian? But he was Eddie's friend. He was always trying to cheer him up, get him to think positively. So? So did I, but that didn't stop the both of you from suspecting me. I wasn't the only one Eddie asked to help end it. That's why you wanted Jackie to hold off from going to the police, right? Yeah. I wanted to give him a chance to give himself up. I figured it would go easy on him if he did. After all, I mean, it's not like he's an axe murderer or anything. 
Steve, he's still a murderer. No, he's a brave man. And now he's going to jail for having the guts to do what everyone else was too squeamish to do. Yeah, better than Robin Hurst copying it, though, eh? Imagine the poor prison officers trying to keep her in line. <laughs> what shall we drink to? Freedom, truth and justice? Ah, oh, whatever. I'm just relieved the nightmare's over. <coughs> Cheers. Cheers. Are we expecting anyone? Probably the media come to turn you into a celebrity. Oh, I doubt it. They're only interested in bad news. Oh, Ian, oh, I thought you'd be in I'm on that. bail. I came here straight from the court. I'd like to speak to Kerry. I don't think that's a good idea. I just want to apologise for everything. Um, it's all right. Come in, Mr. Truman. I really am sorry. I'd never have let you go to jail. I'd have confessed sooner if I thought there was any real chance of that happening. Seemed like there was a very real chance to me. Yeah, well, all I can say is I'm sorry. Accepted. I'm too relieved to be carrying grudges. And it seems like you've got enough troubles of your own right now. That's something I'm trying not to think too much about. Mm. I know what you must be going through. How can you? God, I still wake up at night seeing his face. Do you know the last thing that Eddie said to me? Thank you. That's all. Thank you. And he smiled. Even if I have to go to jail, I'm glad I helped him. He was my friend. And now at least his suffering's over. What's happened? Oh, Chris, thank God. The police are in there now. OK. You know this young woman, sir? Uh, well, uh, Max! This program is made with the help of your broadcasting team, so you can see more of New Zealand.